All right, so we're here now in lesson 20 begin, and we're gonna take a look at the XGen hair shader. So uh, let me quickly bring up my XGen menu here just so we preview something in the viewport. There we go. Go ahead and close that back off there. And let's go ahead and open up the hypershade. So I'll go here to Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. Let's give that a moment to pop up. Let me bring this down to size over here. So you'll notice that there is by default an XGen shader already here, and it's already assigned to uh, a specific piece of geometry that's gonna relate the information back to the fur. That's gonna be found here under this Bigfoot fur collection, Bigfoot body fur, and there it is, the XGMR Geo shader. So this is what's applied to it. Uh, there aren't really uh, any changes I've made to it yet. These are kind of just the defaults. You'll notice that we have that default orange color. Remember that from earlier, most likely. We went ahead and overrode that by setting the custom parameters of root color and tip color. So uh, by default, I also don't call for sure, but I believe tube shade may or may not be on. Tube shade actually gives hairs the appearance of looking a bit more rounded, a little bit more cylindrical rather than flat shaded. When it comes to the kind of higher end uh, rendering though, not just viewport uh, viewing and things like that, I find that keeping the tube shade off gives a better effect. So again, changing the color won't make any difference. However, the rest of these settings will. Now, I wanna just add, uh, before we get too far into this, that there are actually two different types of X-Gen shaders. This is the X-Gen excuse me, X-Gen Hair Physical, and this is new, I believe, for 2016. I could be wrong. Maybe it was in 2015. But there is another X-Gen shader. So if we were to look over here, I'm just going to type in X-Gen. Go, oops. thought I typed in X-Gen there. There we go. You can see that there's also an X-Gen Hair Phenomenon shader. This is what used to be the default. Uh, you can see I can go ahead and create it. And I get this, oops, had the wrong one selected there. This is kind of the old fashioned shader. The new one works much better, produces a better result. You can feel free to play with this, this one too if you'd like. It was obviously doing a pretty good job in prior versions of Maya. Again, if you want to make sure that this is what's attached to your geometry, all you need to do is select this XGMR Geo Shader, and of course, just assign the XGen Phenom shader to it. So I'm not gonna use that though. I'm gonna be using the XGen uh, physical shader. All right, so let's make sure that's what's selected. Now, the first settings I wanna take a look at, if you recall looking from the last render, the fur looked a little bit kind of bland. Um, it also was a little overly shiny. Uh, that's probably coming the blandness from lack of a lot of transmission, which is light passing through the hair. And also this strange kind of orange glint color and the fact that we're reflecting quite a bit. Now the fact that it's not extremely shiny fur is also coming from the fact that we have our roughness settings cranked up fairly high on some of these. Now some of these settings you will be able to actually preview inside of the viewport here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this off. We already have it loaded here anyway. And hopefully we can see some of these changes. I'm going to squeeze this down a little bit so we get a touch more space. I'm also going to Probably just close off my outliner there. There we go. So let's see if we can catch some of these updates. I'm going to try setting my roughness a little bit lower. It actually looks like it's not updating here. I've actually had some good luck with a lot of these settings updating in here, but it doesn't look like some of these are actually working right now, unfortunately. But that's okay. We'll see them in our renders. So I'm going to start by taking my roughness down. In fact, let's just take it to point one and see how that affects our render. I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick render. Now, in my metal ray settings right now, I'm kind of just at the defaults. So if you look at quality over here, we're set to just 0.25, and I don't have any kind of uh, indirect diffuse, not the new prototype GI, nor final gather turned on yet. In fact, I may actually take this down a little bit lower to just 0.2 to speed this up a bit. Now, I'm rendering, I believe, let's bring up XGen here for a moment and take a look at our preview and output. I'm rendering 50% of the hairs that it's currently set up to render. If I want more, I can always add that. But let's take a render and see what we have. So you can see we actually have a fairly funny looking result. It's actually kind of brought those highlights down to almost pinpoints. 
Let's go ahead and make a couple of adjustments here. Let me go back to my attribute editor here. So I actually think higher roughness isn't going to be a bad idea. So let's go ahead and make the fur fairly rough. Again, if we're considering this Bigfoot Yeti or whatever kind of fur it is, I imagine it would be on the rougher side. Now, the reflection weight, I think, would be a bit lower. I'm going to maybe drop that to about 0.6. And we can also roughen up that reflection a bit, maybe to something like 0.85. Now, I want to make sure that uh, some of that reflected color we're seeing, this glint or a highlight, it's going to be a little closer to white. don't really want that orangey color there. Same thing for the transmission color, the light that passes through the fur. I think I'm going to prefer that to be white. Not, maybe not even necessarily completely white. Maybe we'll just gray that down a little bit. So let's see kind of what that gives us right there. Go ahead and take another render. Okay, so the fur is a little bit on the rougher side now. I'd really like to see a little bit more light maybe starting to kind of come through the fur though. Let's see what we can do about that. So um, oops, looks like I've accidentally deselected my shader there. So okay, I'll go ahead and let's grab this here and we should be able to grab the shader through there. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm thinking, first of all, I'm going to take my glint weight down just a touch. And uh, I think the transmission roughness can come up. So hopefully that'll help kind of bring some of that light in and through. Uh, the overall weight, let's bring down just a bit. Let's see what that does for us. Go ahead and take another render. Okay, so we have a little bit more of that light starting to come through here now. We can kind of see the difference between those two right there. Um, I still think, even though the fur, I want it to be rough, I think I can bring a little bit more highlight into it. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and bring the glint color up a bit more. Maybe we will take that a little bit higher, maybe to 0.8. And I will bring up a little bit of reflected color. I don't want too much. I don't want this guy to completely light up but just a little bit there. And maybe, maybe I do actually up my transmission weight a bit more. Let's try 0.4 there. Okay, and let's go ahead and do yet another render. Okay, that's brightened things up a little bit more. I'm thinking my overall roughness though is probably just a bit too high. I'm seeing some highlight appear, but it's just kind of hard to read it. And uh, I do want a little bit more of that there. So let's go ahead and turn our overall, um, well, we can turn the reflection roughness down, I guess. We can try maybe 0.5 there. And maybe on our overall roughness, I also come back down. Maybe I come down to something like uh, 0.5. And let's see what we get now. Okay, as you can see, those settings are a bit sensitive. Even just bringing them down a bit, I have some fairly sharp highlights in here now. So let's make yet a couple more changes. I'll kind of have those. Maybe we'll put the reflection, I'm sorry, the reflection roughness to about 0.6 and the overall roughness also to about 6, maybe even 6.5. Okay, and I can up a little bit more reflection color right there. Might actually give it even a little more transmission color, just a little bit brighter. And let's give it a little bit more of this transmission weight as well. Uh, the roughness I'll bring down just a touch right there. Okay, and what I'd like to do at this point as well is let's introduce uh, just some slightly better quality. I'm going to come in here and maybe bring my quality up to maybe 0.4. Yeah, let's even do 0.5. And I'm going to add just some regular final gather in there. So this render will take a little bit longer. All right, there we go. And you can see it looks much better. Um, I kind of drowned out a little bit of the color. I found that uh, that reflection rate really does kind of eat away at actual color, unless it's a very vibrant color. If you got like neon green, it doesn't get eaten away as much. But these other colors do kind of uh, uh, get a little muted down. But you can take a look. The quality of the light kind of coming through up here now looks much better. And the fur overall just has a nice feel to it. If you really kind of zoom in here, and we don't have much res and start taking a look, we do have some really, really nice quality. So um, I'm probably going to play a little bit more with this um, you know, in between lessons. I'm really just going to mess with these settings just like I am right now. May possibly adjust my lights a little bit. 
But that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, again, I'm not going to claim to be any expert on the shading aspects of this. Um, you know, I usually kind of just play with the settings till I get roughly what I want. So uh, I think that's about it for this lesson. In the next lesson, what we're going to do is talk about how we can actually batch render this out and uh, you know, pretty much set up for our final render. So I'll see you guys there.